We are back in this ongoing series of Mason is forced to watch a classic Disney animated film and then people yell at him in the comments about whether he liked it or didn't like it. Regardless of my choice. <laughs> That's right. That's not really a choice, is it? I either liked it or I didn't like it. Opinions, opinions, man. But when it comes to Disney, you know they pay everybody online. Except uh, for those people who tell it how it is. You know what right. I'm talking about. Is that us this time around or not? Who's to say? I don't know. <laughs> Basically, though, uh, please leave a like if you could. We really appreciate it. We've done some of these in the past. We've done a Lion King. We've done Aladdin. We've done Dumbo. <laughs> We're now doing the 1998 film Mulan. Mulan, more like Pulan. Oh, no! no actually, I quite like this one. Well, I was going to say... You know why? Mm. Easy algorithm. The parents are alive. I was going to say, that's a big part of this movie, isn't yeah, it? The parents are alive. It's yeah. not a grim, sad tale of dead parents and my life's really terrible. Maybe it'll get slightly better. Did it? I don't know. <laughs> but in this, her parents Find are out in the uh, director video sequel right? <laughs> if my life got better or not. I mean, yeah. s- okay, spoilers. I don't know if this is true or not. There's, there's, there are director video sequels to this. Did Mulan. the parents die? I have no idea. Okay, then. <laughs> right. Yeah. I had this whole build up to like ask you about what you thought of this movie. I writ- wrote this thing out and you just jumped let's into do it. it again. Okay, let's fine. Do it again. Here let's, we go. Let's do it anyway. Mason, it's, this, mo- this movie was 2,000 years in the making, five years of work. It had cutting edge animation techniques with painstaking historical recreation because they visited things like the Great Wall of China from end to end to see how does this all come together. Did they? Borrowing art styles from Chinese culture and the blending whole thing. it. Yeah, the, the, whole whole, thing. the whole thing. With modern uh, techniques. I also wrote that they kept both their parents alive and then said, isn't any good? And you would have said, yeah, you liked it. So there we go. No, I would have said Mulan more like Pulan. I would have said that. Joke. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. primo joke. <laughs> yes. And then I would have said that I liked it. I do like a lot of the casting in this movie. What, do you think they sent an intern? With like one of those clicky wheels to go all the way down <laughs> the Great Wall of China. And they sent them into space to see if you could really see it from space. Mm. You can't, it turns out. That's a myth. You cannot see that it from is space. A, that's a myth. That's a myth. I quite like this one. I don't think it's perfect. There's some mm. elements of it that I don't like. Uh, one of the things I do enjoy, though, is Ming-Na Wen as the lead. Mm-hmm. I think she's terrific. They even added touches of her to the character. Like, Ming-Na Wen apparently touches her hair a lot, and so they added that in. But oh. I feel like that's just a... People just touch their hair, don't they? Is that t- like I've a- never touched my hair even <laughs> once. <laughs> it's interesting, though, because originally when they were putting this together, they went away from the folktale, and s- they started this character as someone who wanted to escape and she was quite self-serving. And then they realised this isn't a very likeable character. So they went, why don't we just do the thing that's kind of traditionally the case in this story where she's trying to protect her family, father specifically. So let's adapt the the actual story of, of, of the Legend of Milan yeah, into exactly. the movie Milan. And we'll put a dragon in it for no reason yeah, or whatever cool. called Mushu. Uh, I don't love the dragon. I think the dragon is a mistake. I have not seen the new movie when we are recording this. Uh-huh. I don't care that they took it out. Do you think they thought they needed like an Aladdin style? I think that's exactly what happened. Yeah. I was reading up on the reason they did this and yeah, they went Robin Williams, Genie, Eddie Murphy, Dragon. I just don't think it fits or is very funny. And he's also got a sidekick. Like yeah, a, the little grasshopper. Like, thing, I think yeah. you could have just kept the grasshopper and just kind of leave it at, leave it at that. About maybe like a giant monstrous grasshopper? Hmm. Like as big as a bus? Like as big as a bus. Ah! Exactly. Milan, you can do it! <laughs> ah! We're going to sneak into this temple. I'm going to dress as a lady. Ah! <laughs> Crush. <laughs> so the other thing is I really love the relationship between her and her father. It's mm, depicted really well. You know why? Because really well. he's alive. Because he's alive for all of it. And I also like the idea that you get this glimpse of this man who used to be. When he volunteers, yeah, right. he's, well, not volunteers, he's made to join the right. army. Drops he doesn't the run like a coward. No, he doesn't. And then when you see him practicing with his sword and you're like, okay, this guy, he, he was really somebody special, but obviously now his time and, and injuries mm. have taken Now he's soul. not special. <laughs> he's just a regular old man. <laughs> Who? Right? Ah, ah. on, your dad's not up for this. Ah, oh, I accidentally crushed him. Oh, no. No. <laughs> B.D. Wong is in this as well. He's, he is the voice of the uh, the lieutenant, the sergeant, the captain. That's right. Uh, but he is not the singing voice. The singing voice. <laughs> yes, I had, that's right. I'm like, this seems familiar, but I could not tell you for a million dollars why, so I looked it up. It's Donny Osmond. <laughs> you better believe it wow. is. Wow, it's pretty wild. And uh, the same singing voice for Princess Jasmine did Milan singing in this as oh, well. I so see. there's a bit of crossover there. What I like about also is they got real martial artists in to, to kind of refine some of these techniques. Mm. And you kind of notice that in the fluidity of the movement. It's, it's, it's a beautifully animated in that it's way. It's good kung fu. It's great kung fu, Mason. Mm. Okay, you're a tenth Dan black belt. Come over here. We're going to drop a bus-sized stone grasshopper on you. We're going to see how you react. We're going to film it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's also something really simplistic in the melding of Chinese artwork and traditional animation. They talk about in the making of like the use of 
negative space in the background for a lot of it and things like the computer elements of you know like the hun coming over the the hill oh yeah i think that's absolutely spectacular Mm. that entire sequence Uh, that training montage if we can talk songs there's yes. reflections obviously there's, uh-huh. there's, there's some bangers in this mate i don't find these songs as memorable as say aladdin i don't love reflections my wife claire uh mm-hmm. she loves it you only you only love your bloody own reflection i don't say that much <laughs> when will my a uh, girl with fighting for is kind of a fun song mm. but that i'll make a man out of that's you that's a good one that might be one of the best montage songs mm. or even montage sequences of all time yeah people would say rocky obviously which I can't disagree too, too with. Too sweaty. But yeah, I just think that montage and that mm. song is just such a winning combination. And you know what I like that I didn't think I would like? All of Milan's sidekicks. I mean, she's got a lot of sidekicks, obviously. Sure. She's got Mushu. She's got the grasshopper. Yep. But then she's got three more sidekicks. What I like about... Fat one, tall one, little one. The, the tall one. <laughs> yes. He's also a guy who shatters all these teeth twice. So There's either... a lot of broken teeth in this movie. <laughs> I think it's the same guy. Oh, is it? Okay. So either they were his baby teeth, yep. or that guy has three sets of teeth, or I guess he's like a shark and he's just got rows and they just got to grow out. But no, I agree. I think the camaraderie there feels very real. Probably asked real war guys about it. <laughs> what do you think, war guys? Is this real? Real enough. Wow. <laughs> That's what they said. Wow. <laughs> what I find fascinating about this movie also is yes. Milan is the greatest murderer in Disney history. Oh, because that avalanche? Got some numbers here, Mason. We I mean, there's no guarantee. I mean, the, the main guy lived. Yeah. So maybe they all lived. Let's assume to be on the safe side. Let's let's think positive and assume she killed them all. How many did she kill? I have actual numbers here and I'm she ready. did kill most of them. Okay. Okay, so Milan is by far the Disney character, hero or villain, mm-hmm. with the highest body count. Maybe that's changed in the 20 years since this movie's been out, but... <laughs> Lightning McQueen didn't mow down a lot of pedestrians. <laughs> it certainly did. Uh, the production team drew 2,000 Hun soldiers in addition to the 2,000 horses mm. and only six people survived that avalanche so that's, from the Hun. So we're including dead horses. As, yes, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Oh, no. So what's that? 3,994 people yeah. and horses killed mm. in this avalanche. Wow. That's fair though. I mean, it's war, isn't it? Yeah, they they really did make a man yeah. out of her or something. That's or whatever right. It but it was ironic, Mason. Because she's not a man. They're like, be a man, but she wasn't a man. Oh, I get it now. Yeah. You know what I don't also like about this movie? What's that? Uh, the fact that, you know, when she becomes a man, it's noble and it's cool. It's the best thing you can do. But when her dumb friends dress up as women, they're like, oh man, how silly is that? Imagine, look how ugly these men are. Right. And how stupid they look. Why didn't they make the handsome uh, the handsome guy put him in a dress? Yeah, he didn't dress you know up, why? Because he? he's too noble. They wouldn't do it because oh, it's not funny, is it? Yeah, mm, yeah. that's true, yeah. Man, that fan manoeuvre is pretty sweet, though, isn't it? Where she disarms with the fan. Oh, sick, yeah. Sweet as. Yeah. What a manoeuvre. And then he gets killed by fireworks. And he gets killed by fireworks. That's one more. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. We've got, we've got the famous segment of the show now. It's right here. Uh, it's Give uh, Me Some Trivia. That comes yeah, up every week, right, doesn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, of course. It's always it. called that. And we love to give you some trivia... For to you. you too. <laughs> to you too, that's right. That's what we say every week. <laughs> every week we have never not said it. Uh, this is the first ever Disney DVD to release. That happened in 1999. <gasps> Pat Morita plays the Emperor. Among so you're going to say Pat time. Morita plays the DVD. Oh my God, he could, couldn't he? Yeah. This, this I love. Yes. Jackie Chan voices Shang for the Chinese release, right? Oh yeah, okay. But right. also, yes. and Ben will put in a clip... He sings the song, I'll Make a Man Out of You. Wow. And the film clip is amazing. I just feel like Donny Osmond, it's weak. Jackie Chan singing a sweet song. Yeah. Was some of the best things that have ever happened. Donny Osmond, we'll see you fight a bunch of gang members with a fridge. (laughs) (laughs) Won't happen. You'll be killed immediately. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Milan spends most of the time in her training uniform in the film or a battle armor or a blue infiltration dress. Well, in the merchandise, though, she's mostly shown in her normal dress or her pink matchmaker dress. Interesting. The patriarchy, Mason, is It is, is the I'm patriarchy. Saying. They're like, we won't sell any of these to boys, but we'll sell the girls the Barbie one. Give her some Go judo on, chop action. Oh, my goodness. Right? Give her a grappling hook gun that <laughs> goes on her back. Just give her all the Batmans. All of them, Just you know? switch the head. Yeah. It's fine. Give us fighting in the lava action Mulan, you know? <laughs> exactly. With magma gun. And of course, I have to bring this up. I don't want to. Uh, Rick and Morty, Szechuan sauce. Because I just know the comments of like... Oh, okay, because... Do you want to explain that? Well, so, everybody knows this. Well, but. I guess everybody... But I'd only just remembered this. So, mm. so for the release of Mulan, I guess McDonald's released chicken McNuggets. 
with a Szechuan sauce. Mm. Is that is that right? That's correct. And that, of course... I mean, the nuggets are already out, but yes, yeah. Uh, okay, right. Well, they, I, I know they didn't invent <laughs> McNuggets. But I'm saying it because people will be like, uh, actually, Mason, the nuggets, the nuggets already, already existed. I'm just saving you some time, all right? Okay, right, right. yep. Yeah. Okay, that's that's <laughs> absolutely for the best, and I thank you for it. Uh, and I, and, and uh, Rick loves it. He loves that Szechuan sauce, as he we does. all know. Yeah. And it, it's, it's so people went mental for it and tipping over counters and yelling at McDonald's staff, which is real cool. Even if you're doing it ironically... You're being a fucking idiot. Don't do it. Just make your own Szechuan sauce. Yeah. That's well, we, how McDonald's did it. Yeah. They came up with a recipe and they yeah. made it. Eat better food at a different place. I That's a bridge too far, <laughs> all right? You walk that back right now, James. I will not. Wow. There's also something interesting and controversial around the release of this in China. Uh, because Disney actually funded the release of a movie about uh, the Dalai Lama. Obviously, the Dalai Lama is no friend to the Chinese government and vice versa. I see. There's, there's, look, to get into the conflict would be me saying things I don't understand. Let, let, let's just <laughs> suffice it to say they got beef. They got beef, mate. Mm. So Disney hoped to smooth over this rough patch in their relationship because, of course, this would be a big money-making film, you'd mm -hmm. think, in China. Yeah. And at the time, China only allowed 10 foreign films in a, in a year. Yeah, and they'd already done released. Police Academy 1 through 7 that <laughs> That's year. Right. So there's only a couple of slots Running left. out of options. That's right. So they eventually ended up releasing the film, but it was in a time period after Chinese New Year where a lot of the big releases normally happen. Okay. A lot of the local films. So it didn't end up making a lot of money. And because it was also a year after it came out, for Western audiences, there was also a lot of piracy. So it just didn't do right, super yeah, well sure, at sure. all. Because yeah. when it finally came out, everybody had seen it. Exactly. Presumably And the other so. thing is, uh, the Chinese people complained that Milan was too foreign looking and the story was too different from the oh, she was not Chinese enough. Apparently so. Oh, okay, right. So look, it uh, remains to be seen how that's going to fare with the new one, but I feel like Disney is really bent over backwards to kind of make sure that this new one gets a big push in China. For sure, yeah, yeah. And we'll see how that goes, won't we? And we're going to see how it goes in our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we're going to talk about it on Monday. I'm kind of excited to, to see it now. Of all the live-action remakes that they've made so far, this is the one where I'm like, who's to say whether it'll be good? But I think this genuinely looks good. Right, and they've taken out Mushu. Yeah, so. and of course Disney gave us that money for us to say that. <laughs> exactly, so, so. We'll, we'll say it regardless, <laughs> you know. I shouldn't have said that. I just realised it's proof now that we get... I've, what have I done? I think the people should know. Why haven't I edited this out? What? What? <laughs> you had plenty of opportunities too. You <laughs> Could know? have got Ben to do it? Yeah, right? Yeah, Ben, why did you leave this in? You've ruined us all. I mean... We're pretty rich, though. So yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter now. at this point, I mean, does we've, it? Yeah, we've we've snooked so many people at this point. Yeah, yeah. All in all, I think this is pretty solid. Mm. Do you think it's up there in terms of the four that you've seen now? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. it's certainly no Dumbo. Mm. By that I mean it's a million billion <laughs> trillion times better than Dumbo, <laughs> as an example. As an example, it's a terrific example. Mm. Also, of course, we do Caravan of Garbage here every week. Here is a hint towards a next week's episode. What was it that triggered your fancy about this particular? idea it just it's asking for uh, to be made I, th I felt into a feature film anyways of course like i said we've got a podcast you can come along if you want i'm at mr sunday movies on twitter i'm at wikipedia brown on twitter do you like subscribing to things mason yeah well, now's the perfect opportunity to do that if you haven't i mean more like the weekly poo lanet hey you're on that no i'm standing by that one <laughs> Anyways, guys, see you next week. Grab that, Jimmy, guys. We'll see you next week. I said see you next week. You gotta say, when I said that, you have to say a different thing. We'll see you next week and the week after next and the week after that, but then no more weeks. Agreed. Try it out for a few weeks and then be like, it's not for me. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.